In this lecture, we will discuss networks that output something per pixel of an input image. Examples of networks that have a per pixel output are segmentation networks and depth estimation networks. As building blocks for these type of networks, we often encounter layers that perform some sort of resolution increase. I just called it upsampling here, but I mean that in the general sense of having some form of layer that can increase the resolution of a tensor. For simple upsampling, that means we have a simple filter and a simple resolution change, we do not need to study any signal processing. For example, nearest neighbor upsampling of a 50 times 50 image to a 100 times 100 image is fairly trivial. Also, a side note, upsampling is done per channel. So if we want to take a width times height times C, where C is the number of channels tensor, then as input, then this upsampling can be understood as upsampling C separate images of resolution width times height, where each of the images is a grayscale image, or each of the images represents a function that outputs a single value. Of course, computation is done jointly for efficiency reason, but to understand how this upsampling works, it's best to think of one channel at a time, and then all of these C channels more or less do the same computation. Also, it's important to note that the different channels don't interact with each other when upsampling is performed. They might interact after, or someone can do a joint upsampling and a convolutional operation, but uh, for our purposes, it's best to think of upsampling as something that is done per channel. Complicated resolutions and complicated filters need some background in signal processing. For example, upsampling a 50 times 50 times 50 tensor to a 53 times 71 times 50 tensor will be tricky because of the spatial resolutions. Nearest neighbor upsampling is explained here by taking a 2x2 two two image as input and outputting a 4x4 four four image. It doesn't matter how many channels there would be, it's explained here for a single channel image and uh, if you do nearest neighbor upsampling, up every channel would do the same thing here. So the input image, we have the pixel values shown here. The pixel values are 2, 7, 3, and 8. And these are now actually scalar values, real numbers, that would be uh, inside this you know, image, grid, matrix, tensor, whatever you want to call it. And so uh, nearest neighbor upsampling will take the two and it will uh, create a subgrid of these four twos. In a, so there will one two will become a two by two sub image of uh, twos. And the three equivalently would, will also be uh, treated the same. So this one three in the input image becomes four threes in the output image. This bed of nails upsampling um, just takes the value of one pixel in the input image and puts it in the top left position of a two by two sub image. So for example, this seven will be placed in the top left of this two by two sub image that is color coded and all the other um, locations in this sub image, this two by two sub image color coded correspondingly will receive the value zero. 
Also, we can see how this three will be placed here. And in this two by two sub image, all the other values will be zero. This type of upsampling is then typically combined with a convolutional filter to fill in the zeros. Max unpooling is mainly here for legacy reasons. So max unpooling needs a corresponding max pooling layer. And what we're doing is we remember the element position that was the maximum during the max pooling. And we use this element position in max unpooling. So if we upsample with max unpooling, there needs to be a downsampling layer that corresponds to it where we can uh, remember the element position from. All right, so let's look at this. Here we see an input example that is max pooled. So in max pooling, every 2 by 2 subgrid uh, will be resulting in one output value that's the maximum. So for the top 2 by 2 subgrid, you see the 5 in blue that will be placed here in the output. And for this uh, top right, we see this 2 by 2 subgrid. So 6 is the maximum. It will be placed here. And, uh, and same for the other two values. Now, then there's a lot of network in between. And eventually, we might want to upsample again. And now we use this max arm pooling. And so what the one, so this one is now a new made up value. One, two, three, four is a bit unfortunate. This should be arbitrary values. So let's say this, this value one now, it would go back to this previous max pooling layer and ask, okay, for this particular two by two subgrid, which position was the max in and the max was the five and it was in the bottom right. Therefore, the one now gets to be placed in the bottom right. So for the seven, for example, it comes from the bottom left in its subgrid and therefore the three, when we go to max unpooling, will be placed in the bottom left. Transpose convolutions are a very popular way of upsampling and they are uh, very similar to bed of nails upsampling plus performing a convolution. So this is the torch, uh, PyTorch command conf transpose 2D. And uh, you can see that a lot of these, these um, parameters are similar to what you know from a regular convolutional layer. You have a kernel size, a stride, a padding, uh, you have the groups, you have dilation. There are other terms that are used for this, such as uh, transpose convolution, that's maybe the main name, deconvolution, maybe that's not a nice name, as it has other meanings already in signal processing, fractionally strided convolution, or backward strided convolution. So, the stride tells us how many pixels to skip in the output when placing a filter. Same as for the convolution. So here's an example that would create the 5 times 5 image out of this 2 by 2 input. And um, according to the stride, we will take these values and we can uh, conceptually place them at these positions. Here, 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 and here. And then we take a filter, for example, a three by three filter as shown here, place it over the, uh, the, the value that we copied, and then we multiply the filter with the corresponding value. So the red square here denotes a three by three area where we would take the filter and we would multiply by two, and then we would fill up all these values here, all the three by three values. And then the seven would be copied here. There would be a three by three filter placed again, color coded around here. And um, so the filter would cover this three by three area here. It would be multiplied by seven and this will give the values that will be copied in these grid positions. So looking at that, we would see that here in the corner, there's only one filter overlapping this pixel but for the pixel in between the two and the seven, there would be two filters overlapping. And for 
this pixel here that's between the 2, 7, 3, and 8, there would be four filters overlapping. So here is a 1D example. We have an input image with the values A, B, and then we have a filter, which is a filter with three values, X, Y, and Z. So we would take this filter X, Y, Z, multiply it with A to obtain the values A, X, A, Y, A, Z, and then we would place it according to this red box here. And then the blue value B will also be multiplied with this filter X, Y, Z. So this corresponds to this BX, BY, BZ, and it will be placed according to this blue box here. And then in the overlapping region, the values of the filters will be added up. So why the name transpose convolution? Let's see how transpose convolution is in fact really derived from the matrix transpose where a regular convolution is matrix times vector and the transpose convolution will be matrix transpose times vector. So we set out with a regular 1D convolution that is expressed in terms of matrix vector multiplication where the filter kernels are aggregated in this matrix X and A is the vectorized input image. For really s images with width and height, this will be a much more difficult notation-wise, so we are kind of restricted to uh, one-dimensional inputs, to vectors as inputs. So we have 1D convolution, kernel size 3, stride 1, padding 1. Our input image has four values, A, B, C and D. To that we add the padding on top a zero and on bottom, on the bottom another zero. The filters are written one filter per row and uh, the filter is always the same, it has the same parameters, but it's always shifted by one to the right. So the filter is X, Y, Z and so we have that in the first row and then in the next row we see this filter parameters x, y, z are shifted by 1 to the right. If we multiply this out using the rules of matrix vector multiplication, we can verify that this to the right here is the output. Let's just do the second row multiplied with this column vector here. So we would get x times a plus y times b plus z times z, z, z times c. So that's written here in the second row of the output vector. We are now going to take this matrix here and we're going to transpose it and try to do something with that. So regular convolution is x times a. So now we'll try to build something with this pattern x transpose times something. So this is our transpose convolution computed with x transpose a. Um, there's going to be a slightly different because uh, the padding is just a bit different. All right. And something to note is that if stride is 1, then the transpose convolution is just a regular convolution but with different padding rules. But what we want to see here is just we want to take the matrix from the previous slide, this matrix X here, and we're going to transpose it. So this was a 4 times 6 matrix, then we will transpose it and we will get the 6 times 4 matrix here, 6 times 4. And we multiply this 6 by 4 matrix with this A, B, C, D, and then what we see is we get this transpose convolution. Again, so we'll think of the A being placed here in the second row and then the filter X, Y, Z being placed exactly over this A and then you see this pattern here AX, AY, AZ which is basically the filter 
placed over this value here and multiplied with A. Now the B filter, this B here, this will be placed over this position here and then again multiplied with the filter. So you, we take this B multiplied with this filter X, Y, Z and so you can see this here basically. How this is the value B multiplied with the filter X, Y, Z and then added to the corresponding positions. Now we'll do the more uh, common case where we have an actual stride. So we start out again with the regular convolution and then we're going to transpose and see what we get. So here we have a 1D convolution, kernel size 3, but stride is 2 now and padding is 1. So what we can see here is that the, the filter kernel with parameters x, y, z is now not shifted by 1, but shifted by 2. All right, let's skip. Uh, you can verify this by yourself that this is true. Now we transpose and uh, again this x here that is transposed is the same as this one here, except so this is really the same matrix uh, just transposed. So here we have a 2 by 6 matrix. Here we have a 6 by 2 matrix and, and we can verify that the first column of this matrix, x, y, z, 0, 0, 0, is really the first row of this matrix, x, y, z, 0, 0, 0, and the second column here, uh, the second row, sorry, here, 0, 0, x, y, z, 0, should correspond to the second column here, 0, 0, x, y, z, 0. Again, thinking of this as taking filters and placing them uh, in a scaled fashion. So we would first look at this A and what we have here is that uh, conceptually we would place the filter over this second uh, element here and then put the scaled version of it which, which is basically corresponding to these three. And then what we have is this B we conceptually place um, here in the fourth element, fourth row now, because we have a stride, and then we place the scaled filter which corresponds to these elements here. 